Never then. <laughs> Hello, Laziali, all over the world. We have to get used to this song, Alistair. Can I say it? <laughs> Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I like how you played the entire thing. It was, no. it was like, it was like we were there. <laughs> no, it, it's there's an extra one minute and a half. <laughs> right. But I thought, well, I cut it short a little bit. Uh, guys, if you want, there is the text. So next time we can see if you learn it. It's funny, Alistair, because it's in German, in French, in English, but not in, in Italian. No Italian words. It's shocking, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, Italian is the country of football, right? So I'm a little bit surprised. But guys, we're going to talk about myself later, but Lazio is fourth and this should be <laughs> a Champions League position, finally. Yes. Um, yeah, it should be. <laughs> we'll get on to that. But no, it's um, obviously... Top four is now secure. We'll definitely be finishing in a Champions League place this season after after the win last night. And yeah, you know, that is objective number one complete now. That was the objective for the season, to finish in the top four and to be able to say we've done it with three games to spare. I don't think we should forget what an achievement that actually is, considering what the expectations were at the start of the season and what we've actually had delivered by this team so yeah it was it was great it was a great night to be honest I think Lazio played really well um, it's by far the closest they've come to replicating how they used to play since the break and I think the, it could have been a lot more comfortable than it was if it wasn't for that man Alessio Cranio <laughs> yeah what a what a performance I thought uh probably the best match for Lazio after the COVID-19 break. And one of the positive things is we said two weeks ago that against Udinese, Lazio played better. Against Juventus as well, we saw improvement. It looks like slowly but steady Lazio is improving. And uh, uh, this is quite positive because we're going to talk about the others. But to be honest, I saw Juventus yesterday and it was rubbish. We saw Inter that is really struggling and at the same level, Atalanta, who started so well, they are starting to losing points. So uh, there are still three matches, three important matches, Alistair, because if you go and see the fixture of Inter, it, it's not that easy. Lazio is jolly, just one point behind. Now the fourth position is secure. Lazio has a really a big chance to get to the third, maybe the second position. Uh, and that would be really, really important. And I think it would make this season better because, yes, uh, Champions League is the key, but let's not forget that Lazio was really uh, fighting for the Scudetto before the break. So it would be good to improve our, our table. Yeah, definitely. I actually wrote an article about this this morning about why there's, although the top four is secure and that's absolutely brilliant, there is still quite a lot to play for it before between now and the end of the season because I think firstly you want to finish as high up as you can and don't forget that if we manage to finish as a runners up in Serie A that will be the highest finish that Lazio have had since we won the league 20 years ago so that in itself would be an enormous achievement and I think would make the fans and the players and everybody feel like it's they finished and maybe the disappointment won't go away of what's happened since the break but at least they'll feel like they've finished more in a in a position that reflects their season. Um, I think that the kind of momentum that finishing the season strongly could have could be important. We completely lost that momentum during the lockdown, and I think that's been part of, among many other things, what's affected the team so much. But with such a small break between the seasons now, I think it's quite important if we finish strongly, it might actually help the team start better next season as well. And on top of that, uh, you know, we can still get the record points total for a season. We equaled it last night. There's Chiro going for the Capocaniere. There's all sorts of, uh, yeah, kind of various records and things that the team can still break. And the clinching one, the crucial one, I mean, is to make 
people as nervous as you feel a little bit better about the Champions League by making sure that there's absolutely no chance of dropping out, if you want to explain that. Uh, before explaining that, we have a question from Fouad Mamadov, who's saying, in my opinion, there should be no rotation in the last three games, since Zaghi should field its best 11, because if we win all the three games, we will definitely move up on the table, since Atalanta and Inter clash on the last day. Do you agree with this? Would you not rotate the team of, uh, for example, give a chance to Falbo Moro and try to put always the best 11 to try to reach the second or the third spot? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's the same argument as always, where it kind of depends on fitness and availability and so on. I, I don't think this is like, okay, we've finished in the top four, now let's play the kids. I don't think that we should be that lax about it. But at the same time, if if players are at risk of injuring themselves or anything like that, I don't think Inzaghi should be taking fitness gambles where guys are kind of half fit now. Um, there are, thankfully, mercifully, um, fewer injury problems finally now. We saw Berto come back, Correa come back, Johnny come back yesterday, Patrick's back from suspension. So I think that basically you can do a bit of both because we I think now we are able to rotate but also keep a fairly strong team out on the pitch that should be able to win these games, or at least I hope. Yeah, going back to your to your thing. So as we said, I think we didn't set it on the pod, but uh, if Napoli wins the Champions League and at the same time Roma wins the Europa League, they will go in Champions League and the fourth spot will be relegated to Europa League. It's a very slightly chance, but Stefan Scarpulla yesterday wrote me on Twitter, hey, place a two-team bet on Napoli to win Champions League and uh, Roma to win the Europa League. Odd must be sky high. So yesterday, after the, the victory of Lazio, went on bet 365 and tried to bet one pound on Napoli winning the Champions League and at the same time uh, Roma winning the Europa League. And with one euro, it would be 100. 1,367, something like that. But the stake is so high, the Bet365 didn't al- authorize me to do it. So, so and, and that still hasn't relaxed you about how unlikely it is? <laughs> uh, a little bit, but, you know, it, with Lazio, uh, <laughs> nothing would be a great incredible surprise, to be honest. But I, I, the, the thing is, Napoli is playing against Barcelona way. So that's, for me, it's more difficult for Napoli than, than Roma. In fact, Napoli, I think it's 67 times the post, while Roma is only 17. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, neither neither of them are that likely, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> uh, Napoli, uh, yeah, it was 1-1 in the first leg, and so they conceded the away goal already and have to get past, past, past Barcelona. They're also on the difficult side of the Champions League draw. I mean, Napoli aren't going to win the Champions League. I'm sorry, they've been, <laughs> they've been a bit better, but they uh, they just lost to Parma a couple of days ago. So I don't think we need to worry too much about these things. But yeah, it would at least, um, you know, finishing second or third would at least give uh, people who like to worry, like yourself, a bit of peace and uh, tranquility for during August. So you don't have to watch Roma and Napoli go on runs through the European competitions. <laughs> Alistair, Sean McIntosh is asking, I'm the only one who thinks that uh, we wasted a chance to win the Scudetto seeing Juventus performing like that. I mean, I saw Juventus against Udinese and they were terrible. And to be honest, uh, they have been playing like that all season long. Uh, Probably this is the worst Juventus in the last uh, eight years to win the Scudetto. Mm -hmm. But is it really... Lazio to blame, I think more the blame should go to Napoli, Inter and the other big teams, not Lazio really. Yeah, no, I think you're right about that Um, because Inter especially, you know, that team is far more built to sustain a title challenge than Lazio ever were. You know, it was always going to be a massive overachievement to even be involved in the race. I think, though, that having said that, there's no getting away from the fact that this season will always be remembered with a tinge of regret just because Lazio, whether they were built for it or not, did find themselves in the position to be able to challenge and they they let themselves down. I think you're right about what you say about Juve. I think this is going to be the worst 
uh, title winners in recent memory. I mean, I can't remember a, a less impressive team to have won Serie A. Um, and they will win it. I see some people already kind of talking about that. They're not going to lose all three of their final games. Um, but yeah, they're, they're essentially almost winning the, the title by default now because um, nobody else seems to be interested. I tweeted yesterday that Serie A feels like the most unwanted title in European football this year because nobody appears to actually care about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, look, we, we need to... It's not easy to put things in perspective when you're, yeah, the bar has changed or your expectations have changed. But I think we do need to, I think a good way of uh, of reflecting on a season at the end of it is always by trying to think back to how you were thinking going into it. And if we look at it that way, I think we have to be pretty happy about what's happened with Lazio, uh, regardless of how, how much of an opportunity this has been with a Juve team this bad. Yes, I agree. I mean... Uh... Let's not forget that Sky, for example, put Lazio in the sixth place. So, you know, being fourth, it's it's a great result. And as we said at the beginning, there's a big chance that Lazio could finish above, maybe third or maybe second. Let's not forget that we are talking about Napoli playing the Champions League, but even Atalanta will play the Champions League. So maybe the last match of the, of the season of the Serie A, they could drop some key players and rest them for the Champions League match and maybe lose some points like they're doing now. So I, Lazio is improving while the other teams are uh, a little bit uh, struggling at this moment. So um, everything can happen. So this, I think, uh, it, it's it would have been incredible to win the Scudetto, but this would be a massive overachieving of this team. So I think we have to say that this is a great season for Lazio. And talking about this, Alistair, Inzaghi yesterday after the match said that uh, reaching the Champions League, it's a better achievement of uh, winning the Coppa Italia with this trophy. Uh, what's your thought about that? Do you agree? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think this season it is, yeah, because we won the Coppa Italia last season and another what, four times before that recently. So uh, it's getting a bit boring. It's a bit easy now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, it, it is more important I mean don't get me wrong I do value the Coppa Italia I do think it's a good trophy and, and winning trophies does breed a, a kind of atmosphere of, of success and I think that's really important but at the same time in terms of the uh, financial implications of qualifying for the Champions League it, it simply has to be the next step for this team to continue to grow and it's been the next step for too long really it's, it's taken too long to get here but now with the opportunity that's been afforded to teams in Serie A over the last two years since they opened up all four places um, to a group stage spot, it's become far easier to access that uh, prize money, that exposure. And also the other thing that comes with it is obviously um, player recruitment becomes a bit easier because if you can offer a player Champions League football, they're more likely to be interested in coming to your club. So. Uh, I think that for me, yeah, absolutely. I think Champions League qualification had to come um, soon, or or we were going to start questioning whether whether the methods were right. So yeah, it's it is the next step. Um, but the, the other thing I wanted to pick up on because there's there's a few people who've asked us about this um, is is kind of what happens next. Um, so China last year said. Um, the question is what kind of recruitment next season can ensure that the team is competitive? And Omid Shakabai said, who in the current squad would Nzagi trust to give Luis Alberto a rest when playing every three days? If not, what to do in the transfer market? Maybe a player who can fill in for Alberto and Correa. So I think people are already starting to turn to the Mercato and what might be done and can't be done. So how do you see that shaping up or the influence of Champions League qualification on that? Well, the, 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 the influence of the Champions League is double, I would say. On one side, Lazio have more money, should be something around 40 million euros that hopefully Tare will spend in the market. And the other side is the negative side, right? There is a third competition, high level, higher level than Europe League. This means that the squad must be better, must have more quality because you have to rotate key players. For me... The top priority is the left wing. Uh, we saw it without Lulic, Lazio struggled there. 
Uh, Johnny yesterday, to be honest, played one of his best match. When Lukaku came in, he was terrible. We need, that's the top priority, a top left back. That's number one. Then, as we said millions of times in this podcast, we need a vice mobile, a quality vice mobile. And we need a central midfielder, someone who can come and play instead of Luis Beto, meaning Pristavic, without making the quality of the team drop. Um, yeah. And then a central defender, probably. So these are the, the top movements, the top signing lots you have to take. Obviously, without selling players. Mininko Isavic yesterday said, my goal is to play the Champions League with Lazio. I'm happy here. I have a long-term contract. I don't want to leave. So uh, this is important. Keeping Luis Alberto, Mininko Isavic, um, Ciro Mobile would be the key. There are rumors that Casado could leave, but even though I think he had a great season, he would be one of the easiest players to replace. Uh, so, obviously, Lazio should have to sign another player, another striker there. But, yeah, for me, these are the key, the key targets for Lazio. And with Champions League money, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, um, just looking here, there's there's another question. We got, well, Siamak Nafisi said, um, I'd love a discussion about, in your opinion, which roles need strengthening for Lazio next season, particularly now in the Champions League. So, yeah, I mean, they mentioned uh, Vici Mobili there as well. I think we touched on that last week that Tari has already quite openly said that he's looking to get two strikers in, which is quite encouraging. Um I think absolutely, 100%, that's, um, that's an area of the team that needs strengthen. But it, to be honest, it's quite hard to find an area that doesn't because I think a bit a bit of the problem as well is that none of these, the, the starting 11 is so set that very few of these players are really feeling much pressure on their position or on their starting berth. You know, Alberto, Milinkovic, Savic, Immobile, Acerbi, Lazzari, these guys know that if they have a bad game or two bad games, they're still going to start. They're still going to keep their place every week because Nzagi puts so much faith in them all the time, which is great that he has faith in his players. But I think to, to, in order to get the best out of everyone, it's good to have some healthy competition. At the moment, there isn't even an alternative to Alberto in the squad. There's no one else who can really even try and replicate the kind of role that he plays. Um, so I think that's definitely an issue. People have talked a lot about Rodrigo De Paul. I think he'd be perfect as someone to come in and, and challenge Alberto and be able to play in that same role, experience of the league, so on, ready for a step up. Um, but yeah, left wing back, massive. <laughs> yeah, that needs sorted. That's a, a big problem position. And yeah, to be honest, I think quite a lot of recruitment will be needed to get this team up to Champions League standard. Yes, I, I agree. Even though Lazar is probably the only exception because I got the impression that Inzaghi trusts Marusic a lot. And uh, as soon as he was fit, we saw it yesterday. First time Marusic is fit, he came in. And he didn't play badly. I thought he, he made a nice move at the end of the match while we, he put his body to avoid, I don't remember which Cagliari attacker to, to, to reach the cross in the last minute. So I think Marusic is a good option. The biggest problem of Marusic, Alistair, is that he's often injured. And if you cannot play, then you cannot be a real option. But yes, uh, I, I would say that this is the biggest quality and at the same time the biggest weakness of Inzaghi. Trust too much the, the, those players, right? Mininko Isavic, Luis Alberto, they play even when they're not 100% fit. And this can be very good because obviously... You have to admit that Luis Alberto, Mirko Savic are playing with more confidence, with maybe even more feeling more part of the team because they know that the manager loves them. But at the same time, maybe when they're not fit, maybe when they should rest, they still play and the performance is not very good. I have to say that Mirko Savic first half yesterday was terrible. And then what he does, an incredible goal. You know, that's Mirko Savic. That's the quality of a top player. But yes, if you want to play Champions League, you have to have quality replacement. For example, Zloboslai could be the perfect replacement. He could stay in the bench and come in eventually for, for Mirinko Savic during the season. So again, now Lazio has the money. I hope that they will use it wisely. And as the, for example, if I have to do a sort of ranking, I would put Kumbula or the central defender 
that last or one of the last position for Lazio because if we don't sell Luis Felipe, I don't think we need a key defender for Lazio. They are much more urgent priority, like left back, central striker, and so on, rather than spend 30 million euros on Kumbula. I rate the player higher, but I don't think it's the top priority for Lazio. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have Kumbula in this team. I think he'd be brilliant. But uh, yeah, I think it, it all depends on the terms of the deal because it, if if he ends up costing as much as that, then that's a, a big chunk of the budget from for the summer. And like you say, it is a team. Uh, sorry, it is an area of the team that needs improving, but it's not the area really. Um, on the whole, the defence has been quite good this season, a lot, lot better than it has been previously. So, yeah, I mean, the, the other thing I suppose people um, often ask about Lazio, uh, particularly non-Lazio fans, I suppose, is kind of like, it, once you've had a good season, how much at risk are you of losing players? But I think it says quite a lot about this current team that none of the kind of big stars of this success are really at risk of going anywhere. I mean, the... The big one that people always talk about is Milinkovic Savage. But he's now come out publicly and said, I don't want to leave. You know, we've qualified for the Champions League. And I've kind of speculated about this before that it wouldn't make any sense for him having such a good relationship with the club and having waited so long and never wanted to leave before that now they're in the Champions League, he wants to go somewhere. So it doesn't look like he's going anywhere unless the club get a huge offer that they want to accept is the, yeah. the only difference. But beyond that, I don't think we're really at risk of, of losing players, which is, you know, as much as we like to talk about who's coming in, I think we should appreciate that that's quite a good position to be in. Yeah, absolutely. I think we can say that Claudio Lotito learned the lesson, right? We remember the De Vrij situation, the Biglia situation, and so on. How many quality players Lazio lost because they, they didn't anticipate the move? They didn't uh, try to renew the contract earlier like they did with Milinko Savic. Now, the question is, even if Milinko Savic wanted to be uh, to go somewhere else, he has a long contract. So, Lotito can't ask the money he wants. So, this is a very important situation. But again, another positive side of Simone Enzaghi, right? The, the key players feel like they are so important for the team. They feel like they're a family. They feel like the manager is uh, like their dad, right? Like he, he loves them. And so uh, if Inzaghi doesn't leave, they're happy to say, even Luis Alberto, that doesn't have a, an amazing relationship with Claudio Lotito, never came out and said, you know, I don't think I'm going to stay, etc. And this is all thanks to Simone Inzaghi. So this is really important. Uh, we had a question, Alice, uh, from Omid Shakibai on, on Twitter, who, who is talking, uh, uh, who in the current squad would Inzaghi trust to give Luis Alberto rest when playing every three days? This is a big problem. because And who could be the replacement in the transfer market? Maybe a player that can fill in for Luis Alberto and Correa? What do you think about I already read out that question, <laughs> um, but it was one of two, don't worry. Um, yeah, well, in the current squad, I mean, that's what we just say. I don't think there is anyone who can who can do that job. Um, I think Andre Anderson was kind of the one guy who thought maybe, but obviously Inzaghi doesn't trust him enough. And yeah, I think that getting another career type signing would be really useful, I think. You know, someone with that kind of versatility who's not necessarily tied down to one specific role. He can play on the wing, he can play as a 10, he can play as a 9, you know. Um, but just getting someone who's capable of playing the Alberta role but can maybe play somewhere else as well, a bit further up the pitch perhaps, would be quite useful. I mean, for me, like I said, I think Rodrigo de Paul is, is a great kind of player to, to, to aim for, I think. A, a great kind of profile of player anyway, even if it's not him exactly, because um, Lazio have shown a willingness in the last couple of years to actually sign from within Serie A, which is something they weren't really doing before that very often. And it's been really successful with Acerbi and Lazio coming in. It's been two of the best signings Lazio have made. Well, they have been the two best signings probably in the last two years. And they've come because it's been a lot easier for them to make 
the adaptation because it's not exactly a new league or a new culture or anything. So I think if there's a possibility of doing that and getting a decent deal to do it, then that's quite a good way of going. And yeah, now that there's Champions League football on offer, they might find that a bit easier than before. Yes, obviously, with the Champions League, it's easier to uh, to find quality players that are willing to move to your team. Um, honestly, I would try to give a go to Andre Anderson because this player looks interesting. And I think you have to value the player to see if it's really ready for Serie A football. There are rumours that he's been put in the trade for Kumbulla. Uh, I don't know if I would be happy to see him live like this. But on the other side, we have to admit that finding a replacement for Luis Alberto is not easy. He's the top assist of, of Serie A. He's playing an unbelievable uh, season. So, you know, they're not all these quality players that can come in and replace Luis Alberto so easy. So, obviously, with the problem with top players is that they're not, replacement. They're not replaceable. You, you, you cannot find that quality, especially if you have the budget of Lazio. It's not easy to, to find these type of players. So, Alex, talking about Correa, yesterday, to me, he looked like he wasn't fit enough to play, but still Inzaghi put him in. I thought at that point it was better to put Adekanya instead of Correa. Were you surprised to see El Tuco playing like that? I thought he did okay. I mean, he... Um... He, yeah, wasn't quite as sharp as you'd like. I mean, he obviously had that big chance where he was through on goal. It was almost exactly the same as Immobile's chance that he scored from, actually. But, um, but I mean, well, finishing's never really been Correa's greatest strength anyway. But, um, yeah, he, he didn't take it. I think that probably Nzagi wanted to, to see for himself exactly where Correa was with his fitness. Um, and... I can't remember exactly how long he got, maybe 20 minutes or so. So it wasn't, I don't think it was a huge gamble and Caicedo hadn't been playing great either. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's nice to see some of these guys returning again, to see Marisic back on the pitch, to see Correa back on the pitch. Um, it, it does feel very welcome at this stage of the season just because it's taken so long. Um, but yeah, it was quite funny. It was almost like a throwback seeing Inzaghi make these substitutions where he changes his wing backs and his striker and it was kind of like we're back in 2017 again where <laughs> it was the same thing every week well finally he had options there so you know that was a positive sign one of the last question Alizer Omid again is asking about our defense he said that he he saw improvement yesterday he liked the fact that it's a very versatile defense I should be playing central yesterday he played left back on the left side, uh, Luis Felipe coming in, Bastos, etc. Um, do you think we really need Kumbula? And uh, uh, yeah, do you think that this is a valid defense and that Lazio really need someone there? We we sound, we can't answer already this question, but going forward with the Champions League, my doubt is we'll rather be able to play that often. Let's not forget Acerbi. He's not getting younger. And yesterday, my God, how I was scared when he was limping in the first half. And I thought, oh my, who's coming in? Vabro? I mean, yes. How, how do you think? Is the defence ready for the Champions League? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that is a, a good question. I think that one of the things, big takeaways from this um, post-lockdown uh, run of games is that Inzaghi just doesn't tr trust Vavro still. He really doesn't. Um, and I do wonder what that means for the future, because if he's not going to trust him now, when is he? And if he's not going to trust him when everyone else is tired and you're playing mid-table Serie A teams, he's not going to play him in a Champions League match. And I just don't really see how that that's going to change. Um, I thought he did did all right off the bench against Juve, but um, he's still not really starting any matches. He had a really good game when he did start against Genoa back in whenever it was February. But I think I think we need to be playing Vavro more because we've spent a lot of money on this guy, and if he's going to adapt, if he's going to be able to prove he can play in this team and 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 be trusted in important matches, then he needs to be getting the opportunity to prove that. Um, 
I, I do think the defence needs a bit more depth. I do think Kambula would add some... I, I think it's, it's right he pointed out the versatility, but I think Kambula gives you even more of that because he's he's capable of playing anywhere, really, in that back three. So, um, yeah, like you say, Stefan Radu, he's not getting any younger. Neither is Francesco Acerbi, for that matter. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that we do need some reinforcements because if we're not going to trust Favreau, then are we really trusting, you know... Patrick and Bastos in the Champions League as well. I don't know. Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> and there are rumors that Bastos could leave this summer. So we're going to see. Sunday, Verona Lazio. Very important match for Lazio. Winning would, you know, uh, boost the chance of improving our, our table. And that would be really important for, you know, cl- finishing the season well. As a last, last, Note we have to say is that Lazio confirmed that they are going to go to Auronzo di Cadore. This time it's going to be from the 23rd of August. It's going to be a 10-day retiro. So it's going to be different compared to the normal one. Obviously, very late in August because the season is starting later. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a very easy to prepare this next season coming up. Um, I have no faith at all in the phys- fitness coach of Lazio, but... I mean, let's cross fingers and hope that uh, they, they improve this summer, right? <laughs> well, they have to. They can't get any worse, surely. <laughs> I think Manuel Lazzari should be taking the fitness sessions. I mean, everyone <laughs> just kind of copy whatever he's doing. Yeah, you're right. He had a great performance yesterday, Lazzari. I thought he really played very well. Maybe man of the match. Yeah, when he had three shots saved in about three minutes, it was absolutely ridiculous. But um, no, I mean, it, it is a bit strange to think of this kind of pre-season happening because it's it's so close to the actual season ending. But, um, you know, this is where I think that Lazio can gain an advantage in the, in the early season next year is that so many of these Italian clubs, who are their rivals, Roma, Napoli, Inter, Juve, are, are still going to be involved in traveling and playing matches and so and training and so on in August up until the end of August potentially um hopefully not for you uh, <laughs> for all of us um so yeah but that's you being able to actually get a little bit more time off and get to our own so and I think you know it's important to, in such an uncertain time to keep that kind of consistency and make people everyone will feel more comfortable that they're, they're in the routine of going up there and doing their pre-season so yeah I think it's, it's good news Yes, we're going to see. And yeah, the question is, would Juventus rest the players at the beginning of next season? Or would they simply restart again after a couple of days of rest? That's a, that's a question we, we're going to find out later. But Alizer, again, thank you very much for joining me. Guys all over the world, thanks again for listening to Lazio Lounge. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, Spotify, uh, iTunes and on our YouTube channel. And we're going to talk again after Verona Lazio. Goodbye, everybody.